Wales, Andrew Pearce. The mirrors Kevin Maguire from Labour Party conference in Liverpool. Plus, we're going to be hearing from the economist and former member of the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee, Professor Danny Blanchard. Danny's with us now. You were a member of the Monetary Policy Committee during the financial crisis, so you know what it's like to have to make um, difficult decisions, emergency right. meetings. On Monday, the statement from the Bank of England said that they would take any necessary action and they would be looking at this in their, uh, their upcoming meeting in a month's or so time. Can the Bank of England wait all that time before they act? Of course not. Um, I was actually teaching class live when that talking to my students about it when the statement came out. And I think the first thing to note was that actually it wasn't a statement from the MPC. It was a statement from the governor, exactly. um, who actually doesn't set monetary policy. The committee does. So that's the first thing. If it was me and I was sitting there and the governor made a statement from the committee, I'd have been down there banging on his door saying, you cannot put this thing on hold. You can't say we're going to wait five or six weeks to do something. The urgency was right away. We're seeing chaos in the markets. The job of the bank is to calm nerves. The job of the Chancellor of the Exchequer is not to cause chaos. It's to try and calm things. So I think the idea that the, the central bank can sit there and wait weeks is ridiculous. And the Bank uh, of England's chief bank, economist, uh, Danny, the Bank of England's chief economist said yeah. yesterday that there's now going to need to be tough action from the Bank of England. Can you explain to our viewers why does the tax cut statement on Friday mean that the Bank of England needs to raise interest right. rates more quickly now? Right. Well, I think this, it was a sensible reaction. And he said, this is, this is important for us to do. I think what's happened is that um, the, the market chaos was created on Friday by the statement. It impacted the foreign exchange markets, the bond markets, the stock markets, and what you're saying, to, but just been talking about, the housing market. So, in essence, what you've seen is a tumbling pound, and, and it forces the Bank of England to actually raise rates. I was against raising rates last week, but after I saw what the Chancellor did, my view is the central bank has to step in, it has to raise rates, it has to try and calm nerves, and it has to try and prevent the pound falling further. So, this is the, the Bank of England has to step in to try and calm the chaos caused by a Chancellor, not only by his action on Friday, but it's sort of schoolboy responses over the weekend, which made matters worse, saying I've got more stuff to come. And the other thing which is interesting is that ministers aren't out today. Instead of me, ministers should be out calming nerves, saying, OK, we, we, we've got control of this. So I've never seen anything quite like this, even during the, 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 the Great Recession. You know, we had a government that knew what it was doing and we, everybody was trying to work eventually together to calm nerves. You don't cause chaos. And if you do... The central bank is going to have to step in. My suspicion is a meeting is coming pretty darn quickly and they're going to raise rates. And that's what's caused these interest rates to rise. And it's going to push the UK into recession. That's Sometimes, exactly Danny, what it's going to do. When you have these, the, these, these moments when countries get into difficulty like right. this, and uh, it normally happens in emerging markets um, yes. around the world, countries which aren't yes. in the kind of top league of the richest countries. Sometimes if you have emergency action, a rise in interest rates, sometimes that can add to the panic and the sense of chaos and make things work. What is it the Bank right. of England has to do to make sure this is stabilising rather than destabilising? Right. I mean, the, the concern is if you sit in the meeting and say, yes, we're going to have to raise rates, we're going to have to calm nerves. The worry is that we're in, we're in such unprecedented territory that the markets might think this is, you know, this, 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 this is not really the right way to go. I mean, I mean, the big deal, in a sense, is that you know, they put in this position because, you, first of all, you fire the guy who would say to be calm and communicate it properly. And that then was, you that put was the... Tom Scholar, the permanent secretary. Yes, yes. You do that, and then you don't price what you're going to do. I mean, you were involved in all of this stuff in the past. You, you would normally say, here's what we're going to do, here's the measures we're going to take, here's the revenues that we're going to, we're going to have, and, and do that. But we've seen none of that. So the very complicated job of the Bank of England, I think, is to try and it's to try and calm nerves. But neither has what the Treasury has done. In a sense, neither has the the statement by the by the the governor of the Bank of England on on Monday. It was a sort of you know we're doing okay. We'll wait six weeks. Well, 
it doesn't work like that. An hour is a long time in economics, as, it, as you well know. So I think this is just, I, I have never seen chaos like this. I really have not. Um, Professor Danny Blanchflower, the government announced this huge packet package of tax cuts last Friday in order to stimulate economic growth. You're now calling it chaos. You also, I heard you say yesterday, I have never seen such raging incompetence ever. Was there ever a possibility, is there still, that this could do what the government intended it would do? No, I don't think now there's any chance of it. I mean, if you, if you, if you see markets collapsing, I was just looking at, right, the, at the markets now, the pound is down at a dollar seven. A dollar seven. When I joined the MPC, it was at two. Um, the, the, the reality was that there was no the, 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 there was no real assessment of what was going on in the country. There was no mandate for these kinds of policies, and it, and we have re, the idea that they were going to work was it was in cloud cuckoo land. And if you don't say we'll go to the OBR, we'll try and evaluate this thing, we'll try and work out what it's going to do, and come and basically give people the confidence that you know what you're doing, the chance of these big tax cuts for the rich um, actually a working and b being popular was was basically nil. So. Even e even two months ago, it was clear that this was not going to work. And I wrote various columns saying that. And about 10 days ago, I said, looks to me that the, there was a big problem. I actually tweeted 10 days ago, it was time to short the pound. Do I you thought think, it was um, Danny, that um, the Chancellor yeah. can now wait until the 23rd of November to set out the detail of his fiscal plan? Does he have to do it sooner? And is there any way he could make these sums add up other than by now announcing very, very big public spending cuts to get the national debt coming down? Well, no, because we, we, I, I just think it's too late. Um, Pandora's box is open. The wind is out there. It's unclear what, what they can do. I mean, the fact that they're not out calming nerves now is a major problem. I mean, in a sense, the, I think that the pound is sitting, hovering. I mean, it picked up again a little bit on Monday and then has fallen back. The chance that they're going to be able to wait till whatever it is, November the 20th, seven weeks, I suspect, I suspect they're going to have trouble really getting through to the end of this week, let alone in, in, in November. So this is abject craziness. I mean, re the world is, the UK has not seen anything like this, something that's not planned, not mandated, that in a sense is not even mandated by the, by the Tory MPs, 20% of them voted for the, for this prime minister. So I think it's, I, I, I think it really does not understand how markets work. And in the end, the, the way we'll think of this is, in the end, the markets stop clueless amateurs doing stupid things. And I, I'm afraid I have to say it that way. The markets stop clueless amateurs doing stupid things, and that's where we are. It's constraining them now from doing things further. It's going to force them into action, because if they don't, we know that the bond markets are going to rise more, the cost of borrowing to the UK will rise, but it's now almost inevitable that there's going to be a housing market crash, we're going to go into recession, and it's really going to hurt ordinary people. And I I've never seen anything quite like that. Thank this. you. So Former Monetary Policy Committee member Danny Blanchflower, thank you so much for joining us from um, New Hampshire on the, the oh, eastern seaboard of the United States. We've got Andrew Pearce and Kevin Maguire um, looking, you know, typically bleary-eyed after a hard night in... in the, uh, well, in the conference bars. But also, I wonder, Andrew, yeah, whether... Party yeah, night. but one of the... You know, this is... Mm. This is not a... I mean, you might be driven to drink, frankly, by what you've just heard. I wonder, mm. Andrew, whether you yeah. might feel downcast, whether the Tory MPs yeah. uh, on the call with the Chancellor yesterday might be feeling incredibly depressed. I mean, we just heard there... Um, Clueless amateurs doing stupid things by an economist of 30 years who used to be on the Monetary Policy Committee. What is the government going yeah, to do, uh, Andrew? How nervous are Tories feeling? Tories are feeling nervous, and the International Monetary Fund intervention is very significant too. Look, the International Monetary Fund has made no secret of the fact it thinks uh, support to do with the energy crisis should be targeted. They've said that constantly, and the trouble with the freeze in energy bills 
Everybody gets it, whether you're rich or poor, and it's very expensive. What is it going to cost? Um, one, uh, £150 billion? Uh, so um, that's not helpful, and, of course, that will remind some Tories back in the dark days of the 1970s when the IMF actually had to bail out uh, the government. It was a Labour government at the time because they got into such debt. Now, we're not in that position yet, but Sterling is hovering in a very uncomfortable position uh, and uh, while some people say um, it, it, can, it does bring benefits for exporters, it's going to import inflation because we import so much stuff. And um, it also, it's almost a sense of national pride, isn't it? We do not want to see the dollar parity. Uh, it, and as Danny Blanchard was saying, 15 years ago, sterling was up at $2. Now, look, the dollar is all-powerful. No country, no currency in the world is doing well against the dollar, except, uh, ironically, the ruble. Uh, it's all-powerful. But we're doing worse because the markets have taken fright by what the Chancellor... I think not so much what he said in, on Friday in the Commons, but by that interview on Sunday when he said, oh, there's more coming. In other words, he was almost saying, defying the market. Well, I've got to tell you, chances can't defy the market because the markets set the tone and the markets always win. And you're off to uh, Birmingham on Saturday for the Conservative Party conference. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor will both be speaking. What do you think they have to say to the Conservative Party conference in order to calm this down. Um, Lord David Frost, the Brexit negotiator, said this should all be dismissed as um, typical outdated IMF orthodoxy, which has got to be rejected. Is that the line they should take? Well, I think what they have to do is uh, instill a sense of calm and, uh, and they've got... It's not so much what they say to the Tory party, it's what they say to the country, because we want, to, we want the markets to be stabilised. So they've got to give some uh, uh, evidence that, that, that they're in control, they know what they're doing. Uh, but I'm told, I'm told the view is in number 10, we've just got to um, brazen this one out because the markets will settle down. We know a lot of people in the market said, you know how it works better than anybody, are making a lot of money here, betting against sterling. Uh, so patriotic, aren't they, these city slickers, uh, betting that sterling's going to slide. Uh, uh, but if they continue to do that, that's exactly what's going to happen. But they've got to somehow instill some sense of authority and calm that they know what they're doing and that they're not clueless amateurs. Kwasi Kwarteng is a very, very clever chancellor, one of the cleverest we've had. Cleverer almost perhaps than that guy Ed Balls, uh, who was uh, the shadow yeah. chancellor for Labour. But, uh, but I think his intervention on Sunday was really unhelpful. Kevin, this is uh, an open goal, isn't it, for Labour? And Sir Keir Starmer will be on the programme this morning... Um, did, did what he said yesterday make the party think, right, this is the Labour moment, we, we do have a surge here, we need a snap election, we need to uh, vote in a different government? Or, you know, were, were people left wondering? I noticed a poll said still half of people polled wondered what Labour's policies are. Yeah, they were polled, of course, before his speech. No, he put the ball in the back of the net yesterday. And it is a, an open goal, as you say, because the, the government has just created a, a financial nightmare for Britain across uh, every, every, every class, every group, except the incredibly rich. Uh, by that, with that budget where you increase spending, you reduce tax. People are not daft, they can do that. They can do their sums, they can see it doesn't add up. And those markets are markets that the Conservative Party have worshipped over the years. And even, the, even those uh, speculators and the casino economy are saying, you, you've, you've bet wrongly here, Tories, you've got it absolutely wrong. Now, he, he came up with a couple of uh, big announcements on housing and on uh, energy. But it's the tone, isn't it? That's what it's about. And he's saying, don't forget, don't forgive. They're squeezing you, they're hitting you. Your living standards are suffering. At the same time, they're giving a shared load of money to the very richest in the country. It's a, it's a moment in British politics, this. And, Kevin, and Kevin. Labour and Starmer are up in part because Truss and the Tories are down on the floor because they're, they're dogmatic, they're ideological, they're so right-wing, they've just got this so badly. They've got it absolutely wrong. And most Tory MPs know that.
The thing they've got problem here, though, I think, is Labour has still got to... As Susanna just alluded to that, the polls show people really still don't know what Labour stand for. And what did we hear from Starmer oh, yesterday? Look, he's, hang on. Look he's not, on hang on, Kevin. He's not a great public speaker. He talked about insulating 16 million homes. What homes? Council houses? Oh, new houses? Who's paying for it? And a new, and a, and a new energy life. company called British... How's that going to cut gas bills? How's look, that going to cut gas bills? Look, That's, look, they're dictated look, by the look, wholesale look, markets, look, getting look, look, internationally, not by a state-run energy company. Look, it's not a solution look, at all. Look, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's just a gimmick. You, you know, you've it's dug, a gimmick. You've dug a very it's deep a hole. You're and now make the point. burying Labour, yourself at Labour the bottom is still of that not coming up with hole. a viable alternative. Go on. Go on. They're relying on the Tories to screw it up. Blimey. That's it. M Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck could come up with a better alternative to your government. You've created this mess. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah but Kevin, 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 it's a budget, it's a budget, you, it's a budget, Kevin, it's a budget, it's a, it's a budget you welcomed. Kevin. And you, you welcomed you, a budget Labour that has crushed, crushed, crushed the economy. Order, order, order.